Hello, my name is Rishi, and welcome to Vlogmas Day One. Hello, friends. So yes, I am doing Vlogmas this year. It is my first year on BookTube, and I thought that it might be fun to do Vlogmas. It's not going to be Vlogmas like I know a lot of the lifestyle channels do, where they vlog every day leading up to Christmas. It's going to be more like I know other BookTube channels do, where there's just 25 videos. There will be a video on Christmas Day. This is my first time ever filming in the dark. I've got a, like baby ring light that you put on your phone um so hopefully this looks nice and cozy um and not like a ghost is about to appear from the dark or like i am the ghost of some choir boy which is kind of what i feel like i look like today so um i thought it would be necessary to do a little bit of housekeeping to begin with um i am planning to do a video this vlogmas where i recommend books to you my subscribers um you know i love recommending books that's why i have so many recommendations videos on this channel if you'd like to check out the playlist in the cards above um and so i thought it'd be great fun to do one that's really specifically tailored to you guys so if you leave in the comments of this video a description of something that you want a recommendation for it can be as vague as you like just one word or um, very very specific and i will try and find a book that i think that you would love um so this is the first video of vlogmas and so i thought i would do my november wrap up bring you all of the books that i read last month um, as you may know, if you've been on my, around on my channel before, I like to bring awareness to certain issues that have been going on in the past month during my wrap up. However, this month, I've not been paying as much attention to the world as I normally do. There are, so there are only three things that I want to talk to you about today. The first one is a flood that happened in the Philippines because of a massive typhoon. As usual, I will leave information and places to donate in the description box below. And it's caused a huge humanitarian crisis in the Philippines. And because everyone has been dealing with coronavirus, there has not been the same outreach as often happens during a national crisis. This is like this from the international community. So I thought I would let you know about it and you can donate below. The other thing is, um, at this time of year, of course, homelessness is very difficult because of the um, change in the weather in the Northern Hemisphere. Also around Christmas generally, there are usually lots of events in all, which are really important to homeless charities and make up a big portion of their yearly budget. Um, and obviously because of coronavirus, they are not able to put those events on at the moment. So I'm going to leave links in the description below to some UK homeless charities. But if you're not from the UK, I would really encourage you to look up your local homeless charity. As well as that, food insecurity has massively risen during this pandemic, and so I'm going to leave some links again to some um, food security charities that I think are really important to um, donate to and to help look into helping out at this time of year as well. Let's move on to the books I read this month. So in November, I read seven books, which is um, not too bad. At the beginning of this month, I did the Thousand Drawers readathon, which I will leave my vlog to in the cards above. And during that readathon, I read three complete books and I DNF'd one book. The book that I DNF'd was Trouble the Saints by Elijah Johnson, which was a book set in Harlem in the 1940s about a woman who is an assassin and throws knives. Um, and it, is, it was about her links to the mobster underworld um, and about the gift of hands, which are a gift given to people of colour from their ancestors in order to enact retribution against the people who have wronged them um, ancestrally and continue to wrong them in the 1940s. So it was kind of a dark noir fantasy novel but it was very fast paced and also very confusing i didn't really understand what was going on i thought the atmosphere was excellent and it really really nailed that noir feeling but the plot itself felt very confused i was never really sure what was supposed to be going on and while i don't usually mind a confusing book it felt like there was so much drama and so on the page and so much tension and yet nothing was really happening and it just felt like the prose and the plot didn't mesh together well so I gave up on that one. I also read Mr Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo and I gave that five stars. I absolutely fell in love with it. Having not so much loved Girl, Woman, Other earlier in the year I'm really glad I gave Evaristo another go because this book I fell in love with. It tells the story of Barrington, a man in his 70s who had moved to the UK from Antigua when he was a young man in the uh, early 1950s as part of the Windrush generation. He is a married man living in North London, but he has come to the realisation that he needs to come out to his wife to tell her that he is gay and has been in a relationship with the man she thinks is his best friend since he was 14 years old. 
Evaristo tells this story with so much warmth and love and heart. It's told from Barrington's perspective for the most part, although we do also get a few chapters that talk from the perspective of his wife. And so whilst we fall in love with Barrington and his story, his love story with his best friend and his relationship with his wife and his daughters, in which his wife is he and his wife are really antagonistic to one another um, and so it could be easy to see her as cold and bitter and all these sorts of things where when we see the it from her perspective we also get to feel so sympathetic towards her and the life that she lost and the experience that she has had um, when she came over to the UK her experience with um, postnatal depression and with having a partner who she knows is cheating on her although she thinks he's cheating on her with various different women and it's also really really funny even though all the characters are completely flawed and they feel completely human you also fall in love with all of them despite their foibles which are numerous and very clear on the page it tells a very small story paired down to this one family that can be that has so that covers so many themes of racism immigration sexuality um, and homophobia and i think it's done in such a beautiful light lovely way next i also read love in color by bolu babalola this is a collection of short stories that are retellings of myths uh, from various different cultures from greek myths nigerian myths chinese myths um kenyan myth and all of these retellings focus on people of color for the most part black people some of these myths are told in a way that feels like they're in a mythic outside of time setting and some of them are told in a way that's very clearly modern day for example the tale of eros and psyche is set in a magazine company called olympus and the a thousand and one nights and shahrazad is told as corporate espionage I thought that a lot of these books were very clever. It was clear that Babalola knew her myths really well. For example, she used the word agape in such a way in the Eros and Psyche um, story and it felt like it was a clear link to agape, the um, Greek concept of total love, um, which I thought was really well done. I felt I really liked all of her characters. There was so much warmth and connection between them. However, the problem that I had with these stories was that a lot of the time it felt like it was the same characters just in different positions just doing different things they didn't seem that differentiated from one another Bully Babalola talks in the introduction about how much she loves love and is in love with love and indeed one of the myths that she retells is the story of her parents meeting the beauty of her writing really works well with this topic I just felt like if I had read any of them as a longer form story I would have enjoyed it more because I wouldn't have noticed so much the repetition and I felt like there could have been a deeper engagement with the myth, with ideas about gender or race that she was sort of glancing against but not really exploring deeply. I felt that there was quite a bit of shallowness in these and so I gave the collection three and a half stars. And then finally for the Thousand Doors readathon I read The Book of Echoes by Rosanna Amaka. This tells the story of a unnamed enslaved woman who was kidnapped from her home in West Africa and taken as a slave. Before she has been kidnapped, she manages to save one of her sons. She then also has a, a daughter later on who also gets taken from her and her spirit and the spirit of the man she loves are left to roam the earth looking for her descendants. The story then jumps to 1981 where we are in uh, Nigeria and in Brixton in London following those descendants. A boy named Michael who is the son of Jamaican immigrants dealing with the race riots, police brutality and an unjust justice system throughout the UK and a girl in Nigeria who is dealing with the corruption of the oil barons and the sexism of uh, the sexism and chauvinism and violence in Nigerian culture in the 1980s. I thought that this novel was really cleverly done. I loved the framing device of this spirit and the themes of cycles of abuse, of um, ancestry, of how um, slavery has rippled throughout many different cultures up until the present day or until the 1980s, but it is still applicable today. Um, I really enjoyed the look at families and how families can be broken, corrupted and rewoven. Um, and I thought that the characters were really, really strong. I did find that the ending was a little rough for me. Um, I didn't think it was the best ending. It felt very rushed and um, it didn't have 
the emotional payoff that I wanted from the build-up in the story. I found that a lot of the dialogue was quite melodramatic and didn't feel realistic to the way people speak. However, especially in Michael's section, I thought that the prose was amazing and I really, really loved the way that it often felt like spoken word. There was a lot of rhythm and internal rhyme just to sections of prose that I thought worked really well and gave an intensity and a feeling of immediacy to the to that section. And Rosanna Amaka, this was her first novel, so I definitely will be looking to read more of hers in the future. So then I had a gap where I didn't really read very much, um, and then I've been reading at the end of the month books for another video that will be coming out next week. I think it's the 7th, but possibly the 8th, I can't quite remember, um, that I'm really excited for you guys to see. Uh, so for that I read the book of Lost Names. This is the story, a story set during the 1940s about a girl who is Jewish living in in Paris with her Polish immigrant parents. When the German soldiers are doing raids and taking Jewish people away from their homes they capture her father and her and her mother have to forge documents in order to get away. A group of underground people trying to help Jewish children to escape from the Nazis clutches and into Switzerland discover her forgeries and are, invite her to become part of their team trying to save these Jewish children. Now I have lots of feelings about this novel and the other three I'm going to tell you, mention to you, but I can't tell you exactly how I felt about them until the next video comes out because otherwise what would the, be the point of that? So I'm really looking forward to you being able to see this video so you can see how strongly I feel particularly about this book. Um, not necessarily in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I also read the Jane Austen Society and this tells the story of a group of people um, off well it begins before the Second World War and it goes the, intro, the the first few chapters are over the course of the Second World War bringing together this group of unlikely characters. There is a farm labourer who comes from a very poor family, um, a woman who is the daughter of the rich family in the village um, and who is middle-aged, a lawyer who um, runs that family's legal things, <laughs> uh, a town doctor, a town teacher and a famous movie star and a and a man in charge of an auction house and these people get together to form the Jane Austen Society in the village where Jane Austen lived for the last 10 years of her life and wrote the final three novels that she published. They are trying to save one of the cottages which in which Jane Austen passed those last few years of her life um, and the legacy of hers that lives on in the library of the big house in the town because they all love Jane Austen. The novel uh, just talks about their relationships as well as Jane Austen and analyses her work and also follows um, the romantic and otherwise entanglements of these people. I'll tell you exactly how I felt about it in the vlog that is coming out next week. I also read The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue. This this book is set in 1918 during a flu pandemic at the end of the First World War in Dublin. It is set in a maternity ward in which women who have the flu and are also pregnant have been sent um, and it covers the nurse who has to look after them. She is she's a qualified nurse but she isn't um, like that high up and the ward sister has come down with the flu and so she's kind of in charge on her own um, and then there is a doctor who also comes in who is a woman doctor and so a lot of the orderlies um, make fun of her and she's also known for being part of the 1916 rebellion uh, and then there is another skivvy woman who is working on the ward who ha is basically just there to do all of the little jobs like wiping mopping up the floors and going and fetching things and it's kind of the experience of those three women and the women on the ward and what happened to them over the course of three days. This is my first Emma Donoghue. I'd never read Emma Donoghue before and also one of the most intriguing covers and um, a book that was on my um, most anticipated releases lists. So um, I again will tell you how I felt about this soon but um, I don't know if you can maybe tell by the way I'm talking about it. And then finally I read a massive book this month. I haven't read a massive book in ages so I'm really really proud of myself that I managed to read this whole book and that is The Evening and the Morning by Ken Follett. This is the prequel to the Pillars of the Earth series by Ken Follett which is probably his most famous work. Um, so each one of those tells the story of this one town. Um, the first one is in the 11th century and then it's the 13th century and then it's the 16th century. This one is set in the 10th century in that same place. So it is um, a time of 
viking raiders and um um lords who have more power than the king basically the king can't tell the lords what to do and it follows this one man who is a ship was a shipbuilder on a um coastal town but the vikings raid his town and uh, he and his mum and his three his two brothers have to move inland to this farm um in order to continue existing and then it also follows this woman who is a norman woman um who lived in the north of france and marries uh the lord of the area where that man where the first man is from and comes over to live in this country and kind of get to understand what England is like and how it differs from Normandy. For example, England has slavery and men can marry as many women as they want, which I was very surprised about. I don't know very much about medieval history, um, but it was interesting to discover. Yeah, I read a giant Ken Follett book. Ken Follett is one of those people that people who like a certain type of historical fiction love. I feel like as someone who proclaims to love historical fiction, it was something that I had to do, but you'll find out whether I enjoyed it or not next week so that is all of the books that i read this month let me know in the comments down below if you have read any of them because i'd love to chat to you about them and welcome to vlogmas i'm so excited to get on this train making a video every day this month it's gonna be a big challenge but i'm looking forward to it not all of them will be filmed in the dark after work i promise so thank you for watching and please remember to like this video if you liked it and to subscribe because I'm putting out a video every day this month and so I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun. I will see you again very soon. Bye bye!